everyone. This is Dr. Risha Mehra from ABS Engineering College. Today, I'm going to give my presentation on the Laser Fundamentals Part 2. The outline of my presentation will be, what is the essential condition for laser? What are the main components which are involved in laser? Then types of pumping which are involved in laser? And we are going to revise some formulas. So the very essential condition for laser action is N2 greater than N1. What is N2? Is the number of atoms in the upper energy level and N1 is the number of atoms in the lower energy level. This we are going to prove through the Einstein coefficient results, which I have explained in my previous presentation, that the rate of stimulated absorption for photons is given by N1 B12 U nu, the rate of stimulated emission of photons are stimulated is given by N2 B21 U nu if we are going to divide these two equations. And we also know through the previous results that B12 is equals to B21. So the rate of stimulated emission, the ratio of the rate of stimulated emission to the ratio of absorption is equals to N2 by N1. So stimulated emission is going to increase when N2 is going to increase. It is directly proportional through this equation, which is called as, this phenomena is called as N2 greater than N1, which is population inversion. This is the essential condition for lasing action. So this is the population uh, inversion definition, which I have already told that N2 should be greater than N1. Now, what is metastable state? For this, I'm coming to the three-level laser system. And this three-level laser system includes E1, E2, and E3. See, the laser can be three-level, four-level. It cannot be two-level. Why it cannot be two-level? This I'm going to explain in my next few slides. This is a general schematic energy level diagram of three-level system. And if initially we see the atom is there in the ground state, E1 level, the atom, it needs to be pumped up, raised up to the higher energy level through different pumping mechanisms. If somehow the atom reached up to higher energy level, which is E3 level, in this level, in this state, the lifetime of the state is very less. It's around 10 days to the power minus 8 seconds only. So the atom resides here very for a very shorter span of time and suddenly it is going to drop down. So when it is going to drop down, it will result into a random emission, which we call as spontaneous emission of radiation. Through this, we are going to get the radiations, but all those radiations will be random. They will not be coherent. Now, when... The atom is there in the second state, which we call as metastable state. Why it is called as metastable state? Because here, the atoms reside here for a longer period of time, that is 10 raised to the power minus 3 seconds. The atoms here have time to collect themselves. And once the condition for population inversion is achieved, the atoms suddenly drop down resulting in a very beautiful coherent beam through stimulated emission of radiation. So this is the energy level diagram for a three-level laser system. The atoms by induced absorption, they reach excited state E3 from E1. They stay there for only 10 days to the power minus 8 seconds. This is already explained in this slide. The concept of metastable state, I have also explained that the second level here is the metal stable state, which is having the longer lifetime in such a way such that population inversion can take place. And this population inversion is the essential condition for laser system. Now there are three components which are involved in the laser. These are three essential components and these are also called the functions of laser. What are these components? Center one is the active medium. 
this active medium consists of the collection of atoms or ions which needs to be pumped up to the higher energy level. So there must be something, some atoms should be there, collection of atoms should be there, which needs to be pumped up. If nothing will be there, what we have to raise up and what have to go down, what have to drop down so that we can have the energy levels. So active medium is the collection of atoms, group of atoms, which need to be excited, which need to be in uh, which we are going to give the energy to this system so that the atoms can be raised to the higher energy levels. The second part is the pumping source. Now, if the atoms are there, the collection of atoms are there in the active medium, there must be some pumping source. It can be electrical pumping, it can be optical pumping. We need to pump these, we need to give energy to these atoms so that they can be raised up to higher energy levels. That is what is going on in this three level system. If we look here, then we, we are doing the pumping mechanism. The atoms are, we are giving energy to the ground state atoms so that it can be pumped up to the higher energy level. The third part is the optical resonator, which is extremely important. It means that it is going to have this laser system. It should have the pair of mirrors. One of the mirror should be highly reflecting the left side and the right side mirror should be partially reflecting. That's why we see that the laser has one end which is blocked and the other end through which we can see a beautiful laser light beam. This is happening through this optical resonator, which are the pair of mirrors. One will be the highly reflecting and other will be the partially reflecting. So the types of pumping involved here are optical pumping, if we are exciting the atoms through photons, electrical discharge method, if we are using electrons, there's another method, direct conversion, in which we are using forward bias current, which helps to achieve the population inversion. Generally, it is used in semiconductor lasers. Then chemical pumping is also a kind of pumping in which we use certain exothermic reactions so that the atoms can be raised up to higher energy level. So these are the components which I have already explained. The pumping source is required if we are constructing a laser. Active medium is required. Resonator is required, which is nothing but the pair of mirrors One important question, why two-level laser system is not possible? Three-level we have, for example, ruby laser, four-level systems we are also having. In case of two-level system, what we do, what we apply is the optical pumping. Optical pumping will at most only achieve equal population, but there will be no population inversion in such systems. This is because the probabilities for raising an electron to the upper level and inducing the decay of an electron to the lower level simulated stimulated emission are exactly the same. When both levels are equally populated, the number of electrons, the number of atoms going up and down will be same. This means no population inversion and no population inversion means no laser because population inversion is the essential condition for lasing action. These are few formulas. We can have a look, E is equals to H nu, which is HC by lambda. There are few uh, questions we are going, we, uh, we just get uh, when we are going through our particular competitive exams. So these are the formulas which we should know for in order to crack those few numericals which are related to laser. Like N1 upon N2, Boltzmann distribution law is E raised to the power H nu by KT, where K is your Boltzmann constant and H is 6.64 .6 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules second. The last formula for today's intensity is power by area. So we are going to do some few numericals related to this in the coming presentations. So thank you for today and... Have a nice day.